Hello and welcome to this video exploring the evidence behind L-carnitine's weight loss and performance enhancing claims. In this video we'll address what L-carnitine is, where it's found, what the weight loss and performance enhancing claims are, what evidence exists to support or refute these claims, and finally, is it safe? So that you can make a better informed decision whether or not to buy the stuff yourself. First, what is L-carnitine and where is it found? L-carnitine is a substance that we humans, along with most other animals, make from two essential amino acids, methionine and lysine. It plays an important role in the breakdown of fatty acids into energy. Specifically, L-carnitine's function is to carry fatty acids into the mitochondria of our cells. Mitochondria are colloquially referred to as the powerhouse of the cell, as it is within mitochondria that we break apart fatty acids and sugars to produce usable energy. L-carnitine is found mostly in energy-hungry tissues such as the skeletal and cardiac muscle cells. And, as this is true of most animals, it can be ingested as part of a diet including meat and dairy. It's also produced in-house by combining those two essential amino acids mentioned earlier in the liver, kidneys and brain. So, as long as we get adequate amounts of these two amino acids in our dietary protein intake, then carnitine deficiency is rare. The big exceptions to this are premature birth and chronic kidney disease, and in both cases we cannot make enough of it ourselves, so we need a supplement to get to normal physiological levels. In fact, the US National Institutes of Health fact sheet on carnitine states that an adult needs at least 15 milligrams per day of carnitine to remain healthy, and that a typical adult produces 14.4 milligrams per day in-house, and that a strict vegan diet tends to provide 1.2 milligrams. Whilst an omnivorous diet can provide anywhere from 24 to 145 milligrams per day. So us adults with healthy kidneys don't need to supplement carnitine to avoid a deficiency. So the question is, are there any additional health benefits to be found in increased consumption through supplementation? Now, what are the health and performance claims? Because L-carnitine's primary function is to shuttle fatty acids into the mitochondria of muscle cells to break them down for energy, L-carnitine is interesting both as a possible performance enhancing supplement and as a fat loss supplement. We'll explore the latest scientific evidence behind each of these claims in turn. First, what is the evidence supporting L-carnitine usage for performance enhancing benefits? The first consideration here is that the breakdown of fatty acids to produce energy is a slow, sustained way of producing energy that typically only kicks in after the phosphocreatine system and glycogen sugar stores are depleted. So, L-carnitine is not going to be beneficial in short, power-based activities and isn't going to confer any benefit to your typical gym-goer training for 30 to 90 minutes with adequate rest periods. Instead, its performance-enhancing effects relate to endurance exercise and subsequently all the studies into L-carnitine's performance benefits have been within the field of endurance exercise. Typically, they look at either moderate or high-intensity endurance exercise, where moderate intensity is defined as working at 50 to 79% of your VO2 max, and high intensity is sustained work at 80% or higher, with VO2 max being a measure of the maximum rate of oxygen intake and usage an individual can achieve during exercise. A meta-analysis paper linked down below of L-carnitine supplementation and endurance performance examined 11 studies in which both short and long-term L-carnitine supplementation was tested in exercise lasting for at least 30 minutes of either moderate or high intensity. The studies used a range of different performance indicators to measure effectiveness, with some using subjective scoring systems like perceived rate of exertion and others using objective measurements such as peak power and average power output on a static bike. Unsurprisingly, there was quite a big discrepancy in the results generated by this, but some things came up again and again. For example, across the 11 studies, no significant improvement was found in supplementation up to 24 weeks across any of the metrics for moderate intensity exercise, whereas for high intensity exercise, results varied significantly between studies, with some finding no difference and others finding a statistically significant but nonetheless small performance benefit. So the study authors concluded that L-carnitine may offer some small performance benefit to high intensity aerobic exercise. Now onto the big cheese. Is L-carnitine an effective supplement for weight loss? To answer this question, we can look to a 2020 meta-analysis that analyzed 37 randomized control trials pitting L-carnitine supplements against a placebo pill for weight loss. 
Of these, 24 trials measured body weight changes, with others instead focusing on metrics like body fat percentage and BMI. The 24 trials focusing on weight included 1,520 total study participants, with 224 of these being categorized as normal body weight at the start, 478 deemed to be overweight, and 818 falling into the category of obese. They found the following results. Average weight loss over the trial duration, which ranged from one to 12 months across the 24 studies, was 1.21 kilograms total more in L-carnitine study groups than the placebo groups. But for those that were overweight or obese at the start of the studies, the figure actually came in around 1.5 kilos, and those that were a normal weight at the start only lost on average 0.69 kilos or 690 grams. And this figure failed to achieve statistical significance, meaning it cannot be firmly concluded that this weight loss was not due to some other confounding factor or chance. The authors of the meta-analysis also remarked upon the less than surprising outcome that L-carnitine plus a restricted calorie diet plus exercise was more beneficial for weight loss than L-carnitine supplementation alone. This is groundbreaking to nobody, so let's move on. Another more interesting finding was that, borne out across all the studies, the researchers found that the weight loss effect of L-carnitine did not increase in a linear fashion with dose of L-carnitine, and that instead 2,000 mg per day, or 2 grams, was the optimal dose for effective weight loss, with no further benefit above this. Now on to the safety of L-carnitine supplementation. The first important thing to note is that safe upper limits have not yet been established on L-carnitine supplementation, but here's what we know so far. 1. Short and mid-term studies suggest up to 2 grams per day is well tolerated by most healthy adults. 2. Gastrointestinal side effects like nausea, abdominal cramps, diarrhea and vomiting are quite common even at these doses. 3. People that suffer from seizure disorders should avoid L-carnitine supplementation as it may provoke further seizures. 4. In the body, carnitine can be converted into a substance called trimethylamine or TMA and trimethyl N-oxide or TMAO. TMA smells, it gives rotting fish its characteristic odour and in some individuals that cannot process it and break it down effectively, carnitine supplementation can cause them to develop a fishy body odour. TMAO, on the other hand, is odourless but seemingly much more dangerous. Recent research strongly suggests that increased circulating levels of TMAO in the blood is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. What we know at present is that certain gut bacteria feast on carnitine and convert it into TMAO, and that typically these gut bacteria are found in higher concentrations in omnivores than in vegans and vegetarians. But what we don't know at present is whether this carnitine to TMAO conversion happens on a large enough scale to make long-term L-carnitine supplementation a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. On this, we simply have to wait and see what further scientific evidence comes out. 5. Carnitine comes in two mirror image forms, L-carnitine and D-carnitine. L-carnitine is the only form produced inside our bodies and helps transport fatty acids into the mitochondria. On the other hand, D-carnitine, which is only produced outside the body, is known to block L-carnitine from performing its role. 6. L-carnitine has shown some promise in trials looking at its cognition-enhancing effects and in its possible use as a way of reducing blood pressure, which may possibly offset its cardiac health risks through increased levels of TMAO, and as a fertility booster, particularly in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, as well as some health downsides, there may also be some health upsides offered by L-carnitine supplementation not explored in this video. So that's as clear as mud. All that we can conclude is that L-carnitine supplementation does not come without risks and that each of us therefore needs to weigh up the potential rewards and whether or not this outweighs the potential risks in our own case. Here's a few salient points to help keep the risk down. Firstly, make sure you buy L-carnitine, not something labelled carnitine that may contain the D-carnitine form known to block the action of L-carnitine. Secondly, stick to 2 grams per day max and stop if the gastrointestinal side effects are too unpleasant. Thirdly, if you're unsure and want to wait and see what emerges on the cardiovascular disease front, the weight loss and performance benefits don't seem to be enormous and you likely won't be missing out on much by staying on the fence a little longer. And finally, should you buy L-carnitine? Well, maybe, but probably not. 
If you're thinking about it as a performance enhancer, then it may have a small benefit to high intensity long duration exercise, but not for high intensity short duration work or low intensity long duration work. As for L-carnitine as a tool for weight loss, the possible benefits are quite small, especially in those of us that start at a normal body weight, and therefore it's probably not worth your money unless you're nailing all other aspects of your nutrition, sleep and exercise and still struggling. In which case you may be able to justify splashing out and trialing it for a few months and seeing how you get on. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, try this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.